Hey everybody, this is Charlie, the Pennsylvania grain farmer, coming to you from uh, one of my fields out here in sunny western Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, June, I believe it's the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but in any event, uh, I had promised, I had put up a couple videos about parts of haymaking already, uh, mowing hay and running the tether over hay, so... Uh, I wanted to show here the uh, rest of my process, uh, including the raking of the hay and also uh, finally the baling. So uh, in the first part of this video, we're going to take a look at the raking process. And what you're looking at right now is my uh, rig for raking, the Oliver 77, which is uh, my favorite tractor and a very versatile one and you know the right size for the job. And uh, this is my hay rake, a new idea 4150. Now, uh, this is only the third rake that I can remember in my life. Uh, when I was a kid, the first rake we had was actually an old uh, steel wheeled, uh, originally a horse drawn rake that uh, my dad and grandfather modified so they could pull it with a tractor. And then I think it was sometime in the 60s, we got, uh, we got rid of that and got a... Uh, a new idea rake, a, a bar rake like this one, um, but I can't remember the model number. And we, I had that until uh, 2012. And in 2012, that old rake was so, you know, worn out. And I mean, I took care of it. I greased it religiously, just like everything, but it just raked a hell of a lot of hay. So, uh, you know, I felt it was time to get another one. So uh, I didn't want to pay the price for a new one. So I found uh, this one online out of the dealership out in the uh, eastern part of the state. So uh, my brother-in-law, I didn't have a trailer at the time, so my brother-in-law and I took a trailer out one day and I took a look at it and uh, bought it. But it's, uh, you know, uh, it's a, a really good rake and I really like it. Whoever had it uh, took care of it. This rake was from sometime in the 90s. And as far as I can tell, these teeth on it are still original. So I know uh, other than during hay season, I keep this thing in all the time. And uh, I think the guy before me did it too, because the paint isn't even faded that that much for being a, you know, a rake that's uh, 30 years old or, or very nearly that. But uh, it's a ground driven rake. And you can see the mechanism uh, back here. About the only thing that I've really had to do with it was to change these two uh, uh, U-joints here and over here, which I did uh, the winter before last. But uh, other than that, it's still in uh, pretty original condition and uh, really does the job. Again, the rake I had bef uh, before this, I didn't try to trade it into this place because it was just an old beat up rake, but I ended up uh, putting it on Craigslist and uh, an old guy from this area, I didn't know him, he came up and took a look at it and I was going to treat him right on the price and he told me what he was going to give for it and my mouth probably just about hit the floor and I said, sure, I said, it's yours, you know, and he happily hooked it up to his truck and, and down the road he went and... Uh, I was left here with this uh, 4150, which I really like. It's really been a good rake. So I'm going to get on the tractor here and uh, show you what this looks like in action.
Okay, before we start bailing, I thought I would uh, show you the, the baler that I'm using. I don't know if you can see it very well, if it's showing up well on a camera, but right up here above that shield, you can see a 124, because this is a Massey Ferguson uh, Model 124 baler. Uh, we bought this baler brand new in 1976. Um, prior to this, we had only one other baler, and that was an all-over model, 50 or 60, which we traded in on this. And uh, that came from the, the late 50s. And uh, prior to that, like around the time that I was born, and I was born in 1955, uh, uh, at that time, we were bringing in hay using a hay loader, like... Uh, many of the Amish uh, folks do today the machine that you uh, pull and you know it puts the hay up on a wagon in loose form and then you put it in uh, loose form up into the barn so we had that we went to the Oliver and I started bailing with that Oliver baler when I was five years old believe it or not um, my dad had figured out a way that uh, I could do it um, without it being too hard and then as the years went on I got more and more skilled at it so uh, then so I did that for about 16 years um, I used that uh, Oliver baler and then uh, and I stacked um, I didn't do all the bailing when I as I got older I got moved from the tractor onto the uh, wagon and uh, was doing more of the stacking I uh, probably from about the time I was 12, I was stacking the hay on the wagons and then uh, uh, stacking them in the hay mow. And I stacked them on the wagons because that, that Oliver baler didn't have a bale thrower, it just had a chute. And, uh, you know, we really uh, weren't much for bailing on the ground and coming back later and pick it up. It seemed like a lot less work just to bale it and, you know, put the bales directly onto the wagon and, and stack them that way. So that was a lot of work, and I was really happy whenever we got this in, in 1976. Brand new, so uh, this thing is now, what would that be, 40, 46 years old and uh, is still going strong. I've had to do some things with it uh, over the years, but not very much. I had to change the, the bale thrower belts uh, several times. Um, let's see, we'll walk around it here. I had to change uh, tires because eventually they dry rotted. Uh, the other major thing I did, uh, and if you look under the baler with me, you'll see that the the end of the tongue is round and then right about here it changes to square and that's because that whole right side end or when you're standing behind the bale or the forward end of that uh, tongue uh, support kind of rusted away and uh, one day I was bailing down a little bit of a hill and noticed that the wagon was running up almost right up against the uh, bale thrower and I went back and looked and uh, here the tongue was twisted over to the side because that forward part of the tongue had uh, rusted away and just bent so uh, my brother-in-law at the time uh, made me a new one out of uh, some steel channel which is really strong and I don't think I'm ever going to bend that one. Uh, the only other thing that I've really had to do with this you know of any significance was these shafts that the rollers on the bale throwers um, run on I had uh, two different times those shafts broke right in the middle of the roll. I'm, a, I'm guessing just from the, you know, vibration of the rollers over the years, they cracked. And that was probably 15 to 20 years ago. So what I had to do was take the roll off. Uh, there's a, a local guy I know, that a friend of mine that has a machine shop. Uh, he took them apart, uh, made me a new shaft, and then... Um, you know, use the press to press that uh, the, uh, that roller back on because this is just a bunch of rubber discs with a, a steel plate on each end. And so he pressed that back on for me and I was um, back in business. So this has uh, really been a good baler and, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with it and I hope I get uh, 
still get uh, more years out of it yet because I'm I'm not done and I uh, I hope it's not either <laughs> so in just a few minutes I'm gonna hook the uh, baler up to this and uh, uh, we're gonna bail a little hay
right, that's it for today for bailing. As you can see, I got a, a wagon load there and this one's about, uh, about two thirds. And now I'll take these in and uh, my helper's coming up and we'll get them unloaded here pretty soon. So uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this uh, video of uh, basically bailing the old way, a 1950s tractor and a, a 1970s baler. Okay, but still uh, old, but still getting the job done. All right, so with that, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have subscribed to the channel. That helps me out. If you haven't, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. And uh, for now, this is Charlie, the Pennsylvania grain farmer, saying see you next time.